Last Monday I did the Easy Monday makeup tutorial. I made a zombie. It was a freshly or a newly dead zombie. And I thought, well, for my Saturday makeup tutorial, I should make a zombie that has been dead for a little while longer. So this is the makeup I created. It has been made with some scope gel, gelatin and alcohol activated makeups. And if you want to create a makeup like this one, please keep watching because I will show you step by step in this video. And if you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to upload to this channel until Halloween, definitely hit that subscribe button because we have loads of videos planned until Halloween. To create today's zombie, I'm going to work with the Sculpt Gel I have by Mold Life. So this is an on-skin silicone, which you can easily mix and apply to your skin. So A and B make the silicone and C is a softener. You can add this to make it more flexible and move better with your skin. I have a separate video on how to work with Sculpt Gel, what you should think about when you purchase it and what you need to do with it. I am just going to mix it up for this video and work with it. But if you need a bit more information that I'm going to give you in this video, please check out the other one. But before I will actually apply the silicone to my skin, I'm first going to block my eyebrows with a bit of wax. So this is the wax by Benai. It is a very lovely soft wax that I can just scoop from the jar and just apply to my eyebrows directly. So it is very easy to block your eyebrows with this wax. It doesn't have to be nice or clean because there is going to be sculpt gel over it. But I want to protect my eyebrows and I want to keep my eyebrows, so that is why I'm just putting a thin layer of wax over them. When you work with Sculpt Gel, you need to think of uh, the height you can put to it. You can build it up in layers, so put on a layer, let it dry and add a few layers to it until you have your desired effect. But you can't really build it up that high all at once because gravity will kick in and it will all just go down so better to work in layers than try to keep that sculpt gel in place when the layer is too thick there is the first bit of sculpt gel on my skin I think that is all the sculpt gel I need on my skin to become my zombie. I have the eyes, I have a few wounds, just to have a bit extra fun while coloring it in a bit. I need to let the sculpt gel set and that takes about 5 to 10 minutes depending on the temperature in the room. If it is warmer it will take less time than when it's colder. While waiting on the sculpt gel to set I got a little brain wave and I thought let's get rid of a bit of my hair to make this more into a freakish zombie and I can't do this with sculpt gel because it would be very difficult to remove from my hair again and that is why I heated up some gelatin this is the gelatin by Titanic Effects in the flesh color it is in a very strange bucket but if you buy it you get a very nice package with it um, so if I put this in my hair and I want to remove it, I will just get in the shower and it melts away very easily. So that is a safe product to put in my hair. I um, don't want to cover all my hair, but definitely a bit. So let's put some gelatin in there. So I just quickly changed my hair a bit, not to have gelatin everywhere once I'm done with this video. Everything now is cooled down and set on my skin, so I'm going to powder it with Color Set Powder by Meron, mainly to make it easier to paint over it in a bit. To color my zombie, I'm going to work with two Encore palettes. So it is the Undead and the Zombie palette. You activate them with alcohol, of course, and I think the colors in these palettes are amazing for zombies. Now 
as I now have three different colors on my skin of course my regular skin the sculpt gel and the gelatin I do need to make this makeup a bit more opaque to mix and match all these colors together but that is okay we are doing a Halloween zombie so this tone is called pale dead I'm just gonna get that on all the skin the sculpt gel and the gelatin so it's just the base coat to make everything a bit lighter I still have some yellow in my neck from a video I recorded yesterday so you haven't seen that one yet but if you catch my yellow creation my yellow makeup you will know that I recorded it before I recorded this zombie going on to a light gray color it's actually called light gray Changing to a textured sponge, so I just plucked the surface of a non-latex foam sponge and with it I am going to put some veining textures on my skin. I did this on the zombie last Monday as well, but then it was with grease paints. Now I'm going to work with the alcohol activated makeups to do this. So I'm just using the same sponge over and over again. You don't really have to change it. If you want to, of course you can, but you don't really need to. The vein tone. This might sound strange, but to cover all of what I have done a bit, I have a splatter brush. I'm going to use the light skin tone again to just lightly cover all the veinings and all the colors I just put on to make it appear that they are under my skin instead of on my skin. So this is a smaller stipple brush by Titanic FX. I'm using it with the lightest skin tone again just to color my eyes a bit. Be careful with alcohol activated makeup near your eyes Keep your eyes shut until the makeup has dried because otherwise it does irritate the eye. There are reds in these palettes so I'm going to use the very dark red color to color the inside of my wound. It would of course be an old wound so it wouldn't have the nice fresh blood to it. And that is of course for all the wounds I put on there. So this is a brownish color. I'll definitely put a bit of red with it in a bit. But if I would have been a zombie for a longer time, the blood would have dried. And they would definitely not look like fresh wounds. Now let's get a bit of darkness on those eyes. That is something I'm also going to do with the alcohol activated makeup. If that is something you really don't like, you can definitely do this with powders or with a grease paint. But as I have the palettes right here available for me now, I'm just using them. I'm keeping my eyes closed for the while I'm working with them. As I just said, my wounds would have dried, so they would still be there because they wouldn't heal anymore as I am a zombie, but any blood would be still on the skin. So that is where this drying blood by Vermilion FX is for. This is the scab color, so it's very dark, almost brown colored blood. And this is perfect for zombies. And I will put just a bit in the wounds and running from it, maybe stipple on a bit of blood, also put some on the nose of course. And I think that is the finishing touch 
for the makeup part. I'm using a detail brush to put it in the wounds. These lovely colored contact lenses are called Zombie Nights and I think they would be perfect to add to this zombie makeup. And lastly, I have a black star blend by Merom and I'm not gonna color my entire eyelids black. Well, not my entire eye area, but I do feel that there should be a bit of black under the eye. And finally, and it is just to lose the last bit of my humanity, I will color my waterline black. And with that, the zombie makeup is complete. So I hope you enjoyed me showing you how you can create a zombie with the Sculpt Gel and the Gelatin. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel in the link below. Stay tuned on all the videos we will upload to this YouTube channel. We have a new video every day until Halloween. Tomorrow I will be back with a new zombie makeup. So if you don't want to miss it, subscribe then we can notify you of the new videos we upload to our channel for now i wish you a wonderful day and of course i hope to see you back here tomorrow